My name is Dr. Brandon Robb. I'm a chiropractor at Active Lifestyle Chiropractic. Today we're making a video about muscle work. We are using this muscle work today to teach you how to break up tight muscles. When muscles fatigue, they naturally begin to get tight and form knots in that muscle or trigger points. Now that trigger point requires manual force to break up that knot. If you try stretching it, it doesn't help. If you think of a knot in a rope, Stretching that rope, pulling it tighter, helps the knot. So it requires the manual force to go in and untie that knot. Today we're showing you how to do that using a tennis ball and a lacrosse ball, as well as handheld massagers. Previously we made a video using the foam roller to talk about muscle work. Foam rollers are for very large muscle groups, like the muscles in your legs and your back. Today we are focusing more on the smaller muscles using a tennis ball and a lacrosse ball, as well as these handheld massagers. So we have a tennis ball and a lacrosse ball. The tennis ball is easier to find and it's much softer, so it won't be quite as painful. Lacrosse balls are a little bit harder to find, a little more expensive, but much firmer. So they can actually dig in the muscles more effectively. The balls are primarily used for the, the muscles of the pelvic girdle, which are around the hip joint, as well as the rotator cuff on the shoulder blade. The muscles of the pelvic girdle we want to work with the balls are the hip stabilizers. There's tensofascia lata, also called TFL right about here, just behind it is glute med, and then across the buttock is a small muscle called piriformis. These muscles stabilize the hips so they can be very overworked and get very tight. The first muscle will work will be the TFL right here, and then glute med behind it. TFL is actually the primary cause of a very common condition called IT band syndrome. IT band is actually the tendon for TFL. So in order to fix IT band syndrome, you need to break up the TFL muscles specifically. So the first muscles we're going to demonstrate how to break up with the balls are the hip stabilizing muscles. The hip stabilizers are right around the pelvic girdle here, right around the hip joint. These get desperately overworked because they're just stabilizing the hip all day long. The first one is tensor fascia lata, which is right about here. It's a very small, narrow muscle. It's only about two or three inches wide. Then behind it is glute medius. So to find it, you find the point of the pelvis in the front and just start walking your hand backwards. As soon as you're off bone, that's tensor fascia lata. And it can be quite tender, then just behind that is glute medius. So you take your ball, walk back till it's soft, and that's tensor fascia lata. Then you lay on your side, on carpet, and just let your weight dig into it. It can be quite spicy, it can be quite sore. And you want to lay on it comfortably for a few minutes at a time, at least once a day. Now to find glute medius, just slide your whole body forward a little bit. It's only about an inch or two past the spot of tensor fascia lata, and then that's glute medius. And that again can be quite tender, and just a few minutes at a time every day. We've just shown you how to break up the tensor fascia lata and the glute medius muscles using a ball. The next one is the piriformis. The piriformis runs right across the middle of the buttock. It attaches from the hip joint over to the middle of the, of the pelvis called the sacrum. To find it, you just find the hip bone on the outside, and you walk back and find the most tender spot. The most tender spot is where the ball goes. So you lay on your back on carpet again. Do not do this on tile or hardwood because it will hurt more. And then you just find the most tender spot and place the ball in there. And then you lay comfortably for a few minutes every day. So we've just shown you how to use a ball to break up the muscles of the pelvic girdle, which are the hip stabilizing muscles. The last group of muscles you use the ball for are actually the rotator cuff. The rotator cuff all attached to the shoulder blade. There's four total muscles. Three of them are on the back of the shoulder blade and one of them is underneath the shoulder blade. So you can use a ball to get those. You need a wall and you come in, you don't come in straight backwards to the wall. You actually come in 45 degrees and then you pull your shoulder flat to give you a nice flat surface to put the ball on. So you come in angled, you pull your shoulder around to make a nice flat surface put the ball on your shoulder blade, then you push into it a little bit. You just work your ball around the shoulder blade. Every time it hurts, you push into it a little bit and you hold that pressure for about 60 seconds or until the pain goes away. Then you just cover the entire shoulder blade. Once you've hit all those spots, then you're done. So now we'll show you how to use the plastic handheld massagers to break up the small muscles as well. Uh, these come in different shapes and different sizes. They're all about the same. 
And what you'll use these for is to break up muscles that are even smaller than the ones we've been showing you. The ones that the ball is just too big and kind of unwieldy in the different areas. It's difficult to use them all. There are a few different muscle groups that we normally use this on. Specifically the muscles of the forearm, both the backside and the front, as well as some small muscles in the chest. Now when you use this, it's important to remember you either go down the muscle or up the muscle. You do not go back and forth. The reason why is muscle fibers are very similar to hair fibers. You're trying to comb out the hair fibers. If you go back and forth, you just end up ratting up the fibers. It can actually make them a little worse. Also, this can be extremely sensitive. So it helps if you make the area slippery, either with lots of lotion or slippery clothing. So these muscles here are the wrist extensors. Wrist extensors, when they get too tight, can form a condition called tennis elbow. To break these up, you want to cover the entire forearm. You just start in one area, you start digging and sliding down the forearm. You are putting a good amount of pressure. You are trying to actually break up the muscle fibers. You just work on an area when you've had enough, because it will be quite tender. Then you go down a little further, and you work that area when you've had enough, then you go down to the rest of the forearm. The other side is the exact same. These are the wrist flexors. These get tight, they cause a condition called golfer's elbow. Same thing, you start at the elbow and just dig and work down and fan out across the entire forearm, slowly working your way down the arm. This will be quite tender, so it does help if it's slippery. It'll ease some of that discomfort. The next muscles are called pectoralis minor. They're a very small muscle here in the chest. If this gets tight, it can cause some chest pain as well as even some arm numbness if it gets tight enough. It attaches right here to the point of the shoulder where it kind of dips in, then it's triangle. It comes down the chest wall over and up. So to break that up, you come in and you fan and dig across that triangle in sections because it will be quite sensitive. Then you go a little lower and you just keep working down and across until you cover the entire triangle. Now when you use this, it can be quite tender. Some people don't have the ability to hurt themselves or to cause themselves pain or discomfort. So you can have somebody else do the muscle work for you, and I will show you how right now. The first one we'll show you is the pec minor again. It's right here in the chest. It attaches right where the shoulder dips down. And then it's a triangle from there. So you come in and you work down and across the fibers. You do put in a good amount of pressure and you just work across the triangle in sections and you work your way down the chest wall as a, basically to the person's pain tolerance. Once they've had enough of a section, then you move on. So the next muscle we're going to show you are the muscles in the forearms. Now, same, same exact concept if you do it on yourself, you do it on somebody else, start at the elbow and you work down the fibers and across the forearm. You will want to make this good and slippery. It will still hurt, but it'll hurt a little less if it's slippery. You won't have the friction burns at the same time. Then for the other side, flip the hand over. Same thing, dig in good and hard. Work your way down and across the fibers. You're always going with the grain and cover the whole entire forearm there. Now we'll demonstrate how to break up the rotator cuff muscles for somebody else. The rotator cuff muscles are the shoulder blade right here. The edge of the shoulder blade is right here, then it's a triangle. It comes down and then triangles up towards the shoulder. All the muscles run the same way. All the muscles run towards the point of the shoulder right here. So when you break up the muscles, everything is aiming. All of your swipes are aiming right towards the point of the shoulder where my thumb is. And you are digging in good and hard, and you're working your way across all these muscle fibers, including on the very top of the shoulder blade up here. We have shown you a few specific muscles, but you can use this massage tool anywhere in the body, regardless of the size of the muscle. The things to remember is first off, make it slippery, it'll hurt a little bit less, and then either go down the muscle fibers or up, just not back and forth. Also when you use this, there will be some bruising because of the excess pressure and the small point. Now a few muscles in the legs that can get rather tight, particularly in, in runners or, or other very active people, are the calf muscles, including the outside of the calf called the fibularis muscles through here, and then a muscle in the thigh called the gracilis muscle, which is right here. It follows the inseam from the inside of the knee all the way up to the bone. So when you do this, you want to work it in sections. It will be quite sensitive. You want to either just go up the fibers, dig in good and hard, work sections, then when the, the person you're working on has had enough, they will tell you when it's 
when they've had enough of the discomfort. Then you move on to the next section and work that to their pain tolerance all the way up to the bone. So now we've shown you how to break up tight muscles using the tennis ball and lacrosse ball as well as handheld massagers. These are used to break up trigger points in smaller muscle groups. They can be used anywhere in the body. The things to remember with the ball is make sure you're on carpet, it will hurt a little bit less. And then you find the muscle where it's most tender, the ball goes there and you lay on it for a few minutes at a time every day. When you use a handheld massager, first off you want to make sure the area is slippery either with lotion or slippery clothing. It will hurt a little bit less. Then you go either down the muscle fibers or up, not back and forth. And people can do those motions for you if you have a difficult time causing yourself additional discomfort. We hope this helps you maintain an active lifestyle. Thank you for watching.